Hey folks, today we're going to test out the coding capabilities of DeepSeek versus ChatGPT. DeepSeek is the latest hot LLM to come out of China. It is open source. It has Sam Altman getting all stoic and Wall Street sh in the bed. Geopolitical stuff aside, I want the best tool for the job. I'm a paid subscriber to ChatGPT currently, although that's not even the best tool for the job because I've heard that Claude is better for coding and a lot of people are liking Cursor right now. But if I can save $20 a month by going with DeepSeek, I'm, I'm gonna do that. I've stuck with ChatGPT because they've kind of been leapfrogging the different LLMs and I've been waiting for them to roll out a new model. And DeepSeek R1 has sort of thrown a wrench into this plan as you can see by these performance tests. Well, that's fine and good for things like, can you spell rabbit backwards? But I wanna see how it performs in a real coding test. So today we're gonna to build a BeatPad app just using these LLMs and we'll compare the performance. Then we'll do a little more in-depth testing with doing some DSP programming for audio effects and see if DeepSeek is worth all the hype. So without further ado, let's get started. So here's a basic starter project that I created. I have a audio player here with a simple gain effect that we can enable or bypass. But what we're gonna do next is add a pad style layout so we can create a virtual instrument. I've gone ahead and made that inside of GarageBand and brought it into our app. And now we're ready for DeepSeek and ChatGPT to write some code for us. So I put the same prompt into both of them and then let them do their thing. I'm using the more advanced models that they have. This is not the typical model that I use for ChatGPT. I've just found that 4.0 is a little bit faster than this, but this is the main one that they were comparing against. And it's sort of this deep thinking algorithm where it will give you the answer and then it'll go back and think through it again. I'm sure for some instances that works better, but I've just found it's much quicker to use this 4.0. Plus the answers from AI with coding usually just get you part of the way there. You need to use your own domain knowledge to try and fill in the gaps. For my prompt, I wanted it to create a pad that started with the lowest note on the bottom left. It's sort of like an MPC style layout and I wanted each pad to be playable whenever I would push down the button, and then I want it to stop when I release the button. That's pretty obvious if you know how instruments work, but you have to be pretty explicit whenever you're writing your prompts to make sure everything works properly. I also wanted it to play the notes in a scale rather than playing everything chromatically, so I told it to put everything in the key of C. So here you can see it's putting together an answer on both of these. It actually looked like the DeepSeek was going faster at first, but ChatGPT ended up having the final answer faster. All right, I'll save us some time here. The initial builds didn't compile, so I needed to go back to both of them. And for that, I was no longer using the thinking algorithms. And as I mentioned, both of these just got me part of the way there. They both had some errors that I needed to go in and correct. They don't know the full AudioKit API, so I have to go in and just check and see some of these methods to see if they even exist. But ultimately, after some small changes, this is what I got with ChatGPT. And here's the version I got from DeepSeek. Now with our first experiment complete, we're gonna continue with DeepSeek and we're gonna use this example to start adding some custom DSP. DSP stands for Digital Signal Processing and this is how audio effects are written. Inside of our script, we have a process block. And basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to tell our LLM that I want to create a lo-fi effect. So that's gonna have a low pass filter to make everything sound warmer and get rid of that high end. We'll also add a delay with a low frequency oscillator to change the amount of detuning we have as the sample plays. This will sort of give the sound that tape wobble where the pitch is speeding up and slowing down over time. Well, for this one, DeepSeek finally spit out some code for me, but it didn't work. And anytime I tried to get it corrected, I kept on getting the server is busy message. Ultimately, this meant game over for DeepSeek today, but I wanted to go ahead and finish it out using ChatGPT. Now, the cool thing is I didn't even tell ChatGPT that I was using SoundPipe. It was able to pick that up just by looking at the source code. And ChatGPT knows how SoundPipe works, so it can use all the different components that are already built in. I like to think of it as a really crappy intern that's sometimes brilliant. And in the end, here's the result of creating our lo-fi effect.
And that's it. So how did DeepSeek perform? Well, it did every bit as well as ChatGPT. The main problem was it just took a little bit longer to compile. And also at a certain point, just the server was too busy, so I couldn't get any prompts through. In building the interface for the app, it actually did a better job than ChatGPT because it had the notes in the right order. It also put it in the scale I asked for. But ultimately at this point, I need something that is more reliable for my work. It's super promising that DeepSeek was able to perform as well as it was and it was only created with like six million dollars versus the mountain of money that went into creating chat gpt i think it's a good sign for the future it's still very early they might be working out these kinks probably as i'm putting this video out but hopefully you found this video informative or at least entertaining ultimately i think competition in this space will lead to a better product for us users so for right now i'm sticking with chat gpt i might try out cursor or any of these other ones but i'm willing to change at any point in time i'll probably keep using DeepSeek too it did outperform chat gpt in the first test although they both needed help getting across the finish line DeepSeek was just nailing more of the details before falling into that busy server loop. Ultimately, they both provided different solutions to the prompt, which will make them both useful for finding alternatives in the future. But anyways, let me know what you think down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.